Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, we're going to make one of these, a Japanese throwing dart from a piece of rebar. So everybody's familiar with the shuriken or Japanese throwing star, sometimes you know referred to as a ninja throwing star or whatever. Uh, but the shuriken historically, or shuriken if you want to pronounce it that way, uh, was actually more often seen in the form of what's known as a bow shuriken or a, basically it's kind of like a dart or a nail. And that's what we're going to make today. Super simple project, super simple cheap materials, should be a lot of fun and something you can do in a very short period of time. So I'm actually making two videos about uh, Japanese throwing darts. Uh, the first is going to be this one, which is made uh, with a piece of rebar, super simple. Uh, then we're going to do a more uh, advanced kind of video where they're hand forged, heat treated, everything's done a little bit more to a professional standard. So this is like a little fun project, not very serious. The result's not going to be all that durable, but it should be a fun project anyway, something you can do in a pretty short period of time. So I really enjoy doing projects where you get a chance to see multiple ways of skinning the same cat. And that's what we're going to do here. Uh, this project is so simple that, uh, you know, there's really, I, I could do the whole thing in about four minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show different ways of making this same little simple object. Today we'll be doing about as dead simple a project as it's possible to do in the blade making world. These types of shuriken are sometimes referred to as bow shuriken or throwing darts. They're basically like big huge nails. The materials used will be one piece of 3 8 inch rebar and uh, well and nothing. That's it. Go to your hardware store, go to the masonry aisle and there it is. You don't want the half inch rebar, you want the thinner 3 8 inch stuff. Tools. Real simple things that we'll get into as we go. Okay, so before we get too far into this, let me make a note about safety. Now, if you guys have been following my uh, channel for a while, you know that I'm not one of these guys who's always given a big safety uh, message about whatever I talk about. But in this case, these little suckers are actually quite dangerous. Uh, I went out after I was done and I threw them in the backyard and they really bounce off of targets. So you want to be extremely careful with them. If you're a kid, you want adult supervision, absolutely. Uh, and more important, you want to wear safety glasses when you're throwing them. I know this may seem a little geeky, but this thing really will fly back very quickly. If it hits you in the eye, uh, you're going to be wearing an eye patch for the rest of your life. So be super careful. Okay. On to the fun stuff. So from time to time, I like doing videos where I show multiple ways of doing the same project. Many ways to skin a cat. Now this is one of those. My point is that we all have different levels of skill, different tools, different shops, all of that. So I'm a big believer that if you apply your creativity to the tools and materials you have at hand, almost anything's possible. Most of the work that you'll do on this first project will require just one tool, this, a double cut bastard file. The file is the foundational tool of all metalworking. If you can use a file competently, you'd be amazed at the things you can make. And files will move a lot more material than you might think. But first you'll need to cut the rebar. In this case, I've cut it into three 7 inch sections using a hacksaw. Then I'll flatten the top with my file. Now I'm going to gild the lily here and mark the center point using a scribe and a center square. I'll apply layout fluid, then scribe two intersecting lines. Now you totally don't need to do this, but hey, this is basically a frivolous and silly project. So hey, why not do it with complete overkill? Now I'll start filing. Just a little note about filing technique. 
Some people drag the file back across the work on the backstroke. I've been known to do it myself when I was tired or inattentive, but your file will last a lot longer if you pick it up each time on the backstroke. Making long, smooth strokes is more efficient and gets more work done. I'm filing on a bias, maybe about 15-20 degrees off axis. I'll just file away until I get a decent little flat. Then I'll rotate 90 degrees and repeat, working all the way around until I have four facets or flats. Then I'll knock down each corner, then just sort of freelance my way down until I get a really sharp point. You'll be amazed at how much heat you're generating. It gets so hot after a while that you can't touch it. Once I've gotten to a point, I'll start filing a sweeping circular stroke smoothing off all the little facets and working my way all the way around the rebar until I have something that looks sort of like a sharp pencil. Next, I'll clean up the back end of the shuriken so that it doesn't cut me. And that's it. Maybe 20 minutes of filing start to finish and you've turned rebar into this. Now before we go to the second project, which is just going to be a different way of doing the exact same thing, let's pause and talk about steel. Rebar is made from what's known as mild steel which is very low in carbon, sometimes referred to as structural steel, low carbon steel, whatever. Bottom line is that mild steel is not capable of being hardened. What this means is that this will always be a somewhat inferior tool or weapon. The tip will bend or get dull fairly quickly, so you'd never make a serious cutting tool out of mild steel. But guess what? The good news is that if and when your shuriken gets dull, you can just resharpen it with a file in about 10 seconds. Or if the tip bends, just whack it straight with a hammer. Or a rock. Okay, method two. For this, we'll use an angle grinder. Same basic idea as we used for the filing method. You clamp it somewhere. In this case, I'm using welding clamps to fix it onto my anvil. Then I just grind away, periodically rotating it until it's more or less pointy. Now let's face it, an angle grinder is not exactly a piece of precision machinery. So at a certain point, you'll need to kind of bail out of the angle grinder and finish things up with the file. If the first method took 20 minutes, hey, this one probably takes 10, maybe even a little less. Now method three. This time, we'll use a disc grinder. So what I'll do here is lay a block of wood on the work table of the grinder and clamp it on with another trusty welder's clamp. 
we'll be using it as a jig to maintain a consistent angle against the grinder. The same 15 to 20 degree angle that we filed on the other one. Anytime you want to repeat an angle again and again in the shop, make a jig. Most of the time, you can make one in no time at all. Now we just work our way around and around, pencil sharpener style, until we have a nice point. So, the general point here, you could have used a dozen different tools to make this happen. Anything from a fancy $10,000 tool room lathe, to a belt sander, to a bench grinder, to a file. And in the end, you get the same result. Your creativity is the only limit. So, do our throwing darts work? Yep. So, just to ring the safety bell again, notice how deep they're going into this wood. Imagine how far that would go into your eye, so seriously, wear eye protection. Even going into your foot would be extremely unpleasant, so be very, very, very careful with these things. Check out these mad ninja skills. And ten minutes later, I've lost all but one of them in the leaves. I guess that's a sign I better go on to the next video in this project where I show how to make a much higher quality set of shuriken. Hey guys, if you found value in this video, I hope you'll consider partnering with the channel to help us bring more videos, better videos, more knives, more techniques, all that cool stuff. Click the link to Patreon to help this channel. Also. If you haven't subscribed yet, bro, what are you waiting on? And check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Also, if you're into Japanese swords, check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you'll see more of my work and where you'll find videos about the making of Japanese swords, along with mounting, fittings, polishing, hamones, all kinds of good stuff. Now, more videos.